Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Ziyama, clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between gender identity as your core sense of self, gender expression, and gender role, and how the three tend to tango together. It's a very important subject because I see especially younger adults confuse all those three um, three ways of expressing, three ways of being, three ways of showing up, uh, three ways of relating to. And as a result of confusion, it can be very difficult because then a lot of times if people don't really understand what each one represents, they start questioning what does it mean for them? And especially today with so much misinformation, one of the biggest misinformation that I see is that if you are gender bending, that means you are transgender and it takes people down this rabbit hole of ruminating and wondering uh, without really uh, questioning how they feel about their gender assigned birth. And that's just not helpful for anybody out there. So for that reason, we're going to talk about the three, how they tend to overlap and what do they each mean? So let's get started with gender identity. What is gender identity? Gender identity is your subjective sense of how you see yourself in relationship to gender. Gender identity for you is your core internal sense of self. Gender identity tends to be formed through, as I always say, multitude of things, a lot of things that affect the formation of one's gender identity, including their biology, uh, their sexual variability absolutely plays a role in it, uh, including as well as uh, their psychology, how they relate, how they see themselves um, in terms of their internal world, as well as externally, socially, the society they live in, the environment they tend to occupy, and how is that society, how is the external world tends to see them. I always say that internal would be subject to subject, and external will be subject to an object. Um, for that reason, identity, your gender identity is subjective, meaning it is formed through the experiential fields, through the experiences uh, embedded throughout your lifetime. And no two people can ever have the same experience. For that reason, your relationship to gender is going to be your own and is going to be distinctly different from anybody else's. As you know, all know, individuals who... Uh, don't feel congruent with their gender assigned at birth, who know that their core gender identity is something else, feel and experience gender dysphoria, which is a distress signal as a result of the tension of what they were assigned at birth, how everybody sees them and how everybody relates to them, and yet how they actually see themselves on the inside, which creates this dissonance, which creates a level of incredible discomfort between I am this, but yet everybody else sees me through a completely different lens, which I can't even imagine what a mind fuck uh, that has got to be. And I can't believe that cis people can wrap their small hats around it uh, because um, it's almost as if me seeing myself through the lens of a particular way as a human being can realize that the whole world sees me completely differently. It must be incredibly, incredibly difficult. But that is your gender identity. It's your core sense of self. And gender identity for a lot of people can be fixed, meaning it is stable throughout their lifetime. For example, my gender core identity, I consider to be pretty fixed. I am comfortable as a woman. Uh, I don't find myself, even though I gender bent all the time, I don't find myself necessarily uh, to, as I said, my core identity is uh, gender queer or gender fluid uh, or, or non-binary. I strongly identify on the inside, my core. Imagine if your spine was something that is a foundation that holds you whole being together. My foundation is uh, feminine, so I strongly identify to it. So for me, it's fixed. For a lot of people, it is fixed and stable. For a lot of people, it is also something that is in alignment with their gender assigned at birth. For example, myself, my gender assigned at birth is female and my gender identity is in alignment with that as well. So there's no dissonance. There is no distress. For a lot of other people, their gender identity is not fixed. It is mutable, meaning it is able to be interchangeable throughout their development. It can be fluid uh, as, as often and as frequently as different every month, or it could be that 
for some duration of their lifetime, let's say first portion of their lifetime, they felt comfortable with particular gender. And then later in life, their gender has shifted. The reason why gender tends to shift is because we shift as human beings. As we go through life, we accumulate different experiences uh, and therefore reorient our internal subjective sense of self gets reoriented throughout life based on those experiences, as well as interactions we continue to accumulate with people. As you know, you're not static. As you already noticed, your personality has evolved. Your character, your temperament has also evolved. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. Sure, there's things in you that probably maintain the same, but there's a lot of things that are very different. I know that I am an incredibly different woman today than I was even a week ago, uh, because of things that took place in my life. And the more bigger events, especially that you have in your life, the more you shift as a human being. For that reason, your orientation and your relationship to gender is also going to shift. That's just natural and normal uh, to happen. I can't imagine why so many people struggle to realize why would that even occur. Uh, it, to me, it just seems like such a uh, obvious uh, phenomenon to take place uh, in us as human beings. Including, by the way, this is also why sexuality varies with people throughout their lifespan, because they change their preferences, what sexual appeals to them changes, uh, just like for anybody else. So that's your core sense of self. Gender expression, on the other hand, is the way you like to express yourself externally to yourself and to everybody else in the world. Your expression could be in complete alignment to your gender, or it could be in complete disalignment to your gender. This is an incredibly important thing to realize for a lot of you, especially young adults watching this. Here's what I mean. You can be trans masculine person in regard to your core gender identity and have a feminine gender expression. You can also be a woman in regards to your gender identity and have a non-binary gender expression. I want you to notice how your gender expression doesn't have to be aligned and equally correspond to your core gender identity. This is where a lot of people get very confused because then they start wondering, what does it say about me when I want my expression to be something completely other than how I see myself on the inside? The key question is, are you comfortable how you see yourself on the inside? I can a lot of times have an expression that is either incredibly masculine or very borderline adronages, but my core identity, I feel incredibly comfortable, is feminine. So that's something for you to ask yourself if you're sitting there wondering what it may, means for you. Again, your core identity doesn't have to be in alignment. For a lot of people, it can be and is. A lot of people, the way they see themselves on the inside, they want to express themselves the same way on the outside. For a lot of transgender individuals, the reason why external matters so much, you know how a lot of people say, oh, why don't you just accept your body and why don't you just love your body that you, you know, you're born with, accept it, why you struggle so much, why do you have to go through a gender transition to modify yourself, uh, just accept who you are and fine, if you think you're transgender, just think that you're transgender. Well, the reason why it matters so much to transgender individuals is because there's such a strong internal disalignment to begin with, with their gender assigned at birth, that that expression, external way of expressing themselves becomes a, even more of an extension of who they are. It becomes almost an anchor that holds them secure, safe, and stable. And when society first perceives and validates them based on their authentic gender, it becomes um, the word I'm looking for, it becomes invaluable, not that you need validation from anybody else, but because for your psyche to have a sense of belonging, to have a sense of presence is incredibly important. That's why for trans folks, it's so important to have a lot of times the gender expression very aligned with their core selves. Again, not for everybody. A lot of people have wildly different gender expression. That's a beautiful thing. Number three, the third one that I want to mention is gender role. Gender role are usually stereotypical uh, behavior, attitudes that you tend to display based on our societal gender norms, nor norms gender roles. <laughs> um, they're usually the stereotypical uh, behaviors and attitudes that you tend to display. 
So for that reason, also very important to know that your gender role does not have to be in alignment with your core gender identity. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. And your gender role being in disalignment, so to speak, has no bearing whatsoever on your identity. Very, very important to note. In fact, your gender identity can be one thing. Your gender expression can be completely another thing. And your gender role, another thing altogether. You see how now it gets, as we layer it, it becomes, it sounds a little bit more complicated, but it's not. It actually becomes a very beautiful mosaic of diversity of what we as human beings are actually are. We're not really meant to be very strictly binary and very strict within the binary perceived stereotypical gender expressions and gender uh, roles. This is why for centuries, for centuries, so many people have rebelled against those things. So many designers, fashion designers, for example, constantly rebel against gender expressive norms when they design clothes. Coco Chanel, right? The, the designer who in, invented put women in pants, uh, rebelled against this idea that women can only wear skirts because we as humans naturally feel that we're meant to be outside these boxes, outside of the labels. We naturally feel that we're inclined for much more. Uh, so for that reason, it's very, very important to realize the three of those don't have to be in alignment. To give you an example, a person can have gender identity, core identity that is stable and fixed, or, or maybe not even stable and fixed, but at the moment that they identify as men. Their gender expression can be non-binary. Their gender role can be feminine. You see how the three are not all necessarily in alignment, but yet this individual's core is stable. There's no gender dysphoria. There's no issues with their gender identity. Um, while all of those other ways of being in the world are different. This is why a lot of us socially are so conditioned to see and react in a binary ways that our brain is prone to jump to assumptions when we see individuals whose gender we perceive and assume is something in our mind's eye, but yet their expression is something else, and then their role is something else, we quick to assume and label and to classify without even knowing who or what that person is. This is why any, for example, cliche, any man who's comfortable with their core gender identity as a man, who will have gender expression that is feminine, even, forget even feminine, let's not even talk about overly feminine. Any man who just wears a pink sweater, a pink, pink shirt, and gets into a group with a lot of men, I guarantee you there is going to be at least one of his peers that are going to start thinking, this is probably a gay man. This is probably a feminine man. This is probably, and they're going to st the brain is going to start go on this wild goose chase, right? For while all the while, this individual is very comfortable in their core identity. This is, by the way, totally my husband. My husband is gender bends all the time and yet his core is really strong and in alignment with who he is um, and i think that's a great thing because again we're not we're such a creative human beings all of us are so creative and yet we restrict and limit ourselves within the constraints of gender constructs gender norms gender roles what we've been told in terms of how we ought to be for this reason, understanding how gender identity is different from gender expression and how gender expression is different from gender role and how three can coexist without necessarily being linked strongly to each other is very, very important. It's also important to realize this because it should give you permission to, to play, permission to, um, to sample, permission to try on things. Closing an expression, especially, is meant to be broken. It's meant to be uh, colored outside of the line, so to speak. Closes is meant to kind of have fun with it, to express yourself, to just modify how you look, to see what feels comfortable. Same thing with gender roles. Gender roles are, you know, I think just gender roles are so stupid. Um, I think all of the social constructs are just so limiting 
uh, the really it's almost as if all of us are wearing a heavy ball of chains on our feet and we don't even realize and we keep dragging this heavy weight and we know it feels heavy and every time we want to pull into a different ways we can because we can feel this heavy weight and i think it's important to break free of that because you you are meant to be much more diverse in a lot of your expression in a lot of your way of being don't restrict yourself to these boxes you've been told of who you are so hopefully this house because i see a lot of overlap i see a lot of people who think oh my god my gender identity is uh you know feminine so i gotta express it as a woman i see a lot of this with people who are just starting out to transition i see a lot of trans women who tell me now i gotta give up enjoying metallica and i gotta give up riding my motorcycles and i'm like no please do not give this up if anything it makes you a very diverse and fascinating woman don't give it up don't give up things that you enjoy the same thing for trans masculine individuals or same thing for non-binary folks i see people feel the need to give it up because now they feel it's not in alignment with their core gender remember your core gender is one thing it doesn't change your core gender just because you ride a motorcycle or you stop riding motorcycle doesn't change that you're a woman, right? It doesn't make any difference to that whatsoever. So you have to be careful to, not to get lost in people's perceptions of how they see those things, but to be true to yourself because your life is too short and you only have this one life and you ought to enjoy it to the fullest. So let me know, comment below. Have you fallen into the trap of aligning your core identity strictly with gender expression uh, and strictly with gender role? How did that feel? For me, it feels very suffocating. Um, my mom is still very traditionally in terms of gender roles. And sometimes, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll visit and I'll be drinking a beer out of a bottle. And her comment is always the same. You drink like a man. And I, I, I just love it. I smile at her and I say, yes, you know. I love it. I love sometimes to get into the, the behaviors that we stereotypically consider uh, as masculine when in reality, it's really not. You're just drinking beer in a particular way. There's, it's not even a gendered behavior, but we live in a world where we gender it, don't we? So play outside the boxes, play outside the lines, color outside the lines. Comment below, let me know. I love reading all of your comments and I'll see you all next time. Bye.